Hello guys, Major Forward here, and I'm about to get scared out of my absolute ass recording this video. This is Tiny Bunny. Now, it's a horror game that came out, what, last year? Um, it's more of a story-like game. Um, it's not, it's a game, but you're reading it as a, you're playing it as a book. I don't know much about this game. But I know that for a fact. Now we're just gonna enter a new game here. Now, before this thing starts, I want to tell you that I am in a room at night with the lights off, just so I can get a feel for the horror. I will be narrating this probably in the weirdest voice ever, but you know, I have to, I have to make it sound comfortable. So. Grab a blank. Dead. Grab a blanket. Tuck yourself in and get ready for a nice, nice story. The wind clawed at my window all night long. It wandered the fields and howled like a hungry beast. An endless song weaved from all sorts of voices. Shrill. Gentle, sneering, twined in the air, twinned. They were all shouting and laughing and arguing about something. Someone was running through the snow while casting long shadows that would occasionally creep close to my bed. Our house had a mind of its own. The creaky old mind of a building that has seen a lot in its days and was seemingly trying to share its wisdom with the inhabitants. The lonely house faced the forest, and the dark green thickets gazed back with, with its hollow eyes, rustling, whizzing, swaying back and forth. One could come out and stand at the edge of the forest to reassure themselves that there was nobody behind the crooked trees. Fuzzy silhouettes swaying in the wind couldn't possibly do any harm. It's just a play of light and shadow. Just a play. I knew it was just my imagination. I was already 12 after all. Still. Yo, y'all saw the fox, right? I was in the only one. <laughs> Hey, put away that your book. How many times have I told you not to read at the table? It's bad for your health. Look how slouched you are. Hide. I didn't protest. Put the book about Conan the Barbarian aside. I was stuck on a line. I couldn't understand after reading it three times anyway. Alia had already finished her breakfast and was munching on some cookies. She was so enthusiastic, she almost looked like her typical girl from commercials. You're not going anywhere until you finish all of it. I, on the other hand, was still trying to drill a hole in the plate with my eyes, as if it would make the porridge disappear. Hazy anxiousness welled up inside, all because of the previous sleepless night, the black forests are ha around our house, and the gloomy wind. The longer I waited, the colder the lumpy white substance became. It looked just like the jellyfish from the Costil Odyssey. I love that show. I wonder how horrifying the bottom of the ocean is how cold the black forest is at night. The spoon fell out of my hand. Yeah, no dip, Sherlock. Mom showed me with mom showered me with the cold glare from her green eyes. What did I just say? I'll get it. I had ten seconds to catch my breath before battling the nasty porridge once again. I felt around for a spoon. What is this, carved on the other side of the table? Karina. I guess 
I mean, all of Russia, all yeah, that makes sense. Ah, that's my mom's name. I guess she carved it out with something pointy when she was little. She sure was a rascal, damaging the furniture like that. She would scold me for a week if I did something similar though. Should I remind her about it? No, she's been a bit of a bad mood lately. I imagine her being my age, sitting under this table. I wonder, was mom afraid of the, bar the dark back then? Or the sounds coming from the attic? Or a thick forest. I imagine my grandma coming to my little mom's room, sitting at the edge of her bed where Alia sleeps nowadays, and saying this in her soft, smooth voice. Okay, I'm about to make a grandma voice. Don't, do not, absolutely do not talk about it in the comments. Just, just let this slide. How do you pronounce that? Tiger is a special place, little girl. It's watching you closely, sniffing you out, trying to discern what kind of beast you are. If you're a good sort, it won't abandon you in times of trouble. But if you're a bad apple, it'll grab you by the side and drag you underground. And that would be it. Grandma was caring. She never fought with anybody, never yelled, never swore. Those were times without the maddening screams until late night, without smashed dishes and mutual accusations. Our parents used to love each other back then. Oh, going through a divorce. I remembered listening in one of the of their in one of their conversations by chance. They were talking about my grandma getting prepared for her funeral. She had already bought a casket and she called it her cute funeral box. It waited for its time in the closet, patiently. It was black, upholstered with meat, colored metal on the inside. I saw it when my grandma was getting buried. The house didn't change since the time she was alive. Only all of her photos were gone. Glass covered pictures with gray faces of my ancestors. They all had de had a dead but watchful look in their eyes. I called out from under the table. Alia was done with her cookies, and she was looking at my share like a sly woodland critter. I turned my gaze toward the frosted window. There were a lot of pi dark pines outside, but they didn't grab my attention. The pattern of the frost formed a picture on the glass. Oh, you look, it's a fox. Yeah, see it? See? Where? It looked almost like those typical illusion thingies they put on the back of student notebooks. A mixture of lines at first glance, but if you blur your vision a little bit and look under a certain angle, not outside, on the window. Look, there's the nose, and here's... Hey, eat up! Yes, yes, just a moment. I don't see anything. Hurry up, there's not much left. Ah, there it is. But, it still doesn't look like one. And I'm telling you, it does. Nuh-uh. It does. Stop it, these kids, I swear. Now I couldn't see the fox either. Yeah, you know what, I can't see it anymore. It disappeared. Went away. Only the frosty pattern similar to stretched out little, stretched out nettle leaves kept creeping up the, the glass. My dad entered the kitchen with long measured steps. I want to leave. I want to have a beard like his when I grow up. I mean, I also want a beard when I grow up. <laughs> Mom would ask jokingly, "Come on, shave it off. It stings." This was long, so long ago. 
nowadays rumbling doors and witty comebacks were an everyday occurrence. Alia always covers her ears when she hears something like, what's the point in all of this, through the wall. It's for your sake, Dad would reply, for the sake of our family. I always caught every sound in fear of hearing the most dreaded, the most dreaded and deadliest word that started with the D. D I V O R C E. I don't even want to finish it. It was scary to imagine that me and my little sister could be torn apart and taken into two different families. Yeah, I mean, I bet it would be. Anyway, your fox is nothing. I have an owl in my window. You and your owl talk again. You said you believed me just yesterday. Has anyone seen my car keys? I remember leaving them on the windowsill. Right. Maybe you did, and maybe not. You're a grown man, a father of still, and still. Karina, please stop. I mean, yeah, Karina, you're being a bit of a... Mm. Just let me get ready in peace. Your keys are on the basket near the phone. Well, thank you very much. Anton, stop making a martyr out of yourself and finish eating already. And the owl? There was no owl. But there was one. It had giant glowing eyes. Alia sprung up from the chair and placed her hand on her little face, imitating a pair of eyes with her fingers the size of an apple each. Last year, you had Babai in your closet. Now this owl... Can I click on this word? But, but I saw it. All your shit took her gaze back and forth from dad to mom to me, but couldn't find any support. Have you thought about befriending it? You know, like feeding it with imaginary mice? Damn, dude. <laughs> wow. Don't bully our girl. She's just afraid to sleep alone because she's still little. Alia pouted her lips in rebellion and rushed into the hallway. The staircase that led to the second floor creaked. Mom gave Dad a strict look. Yeah, look at that look. Oh, that look in her eyes. It's so uncomfortable to be pinned under it. Dad just snorted in reply and left, ringing the keys he just found. A minute had passed and the theme song from The Little Mermaid echoed through the house. It was stored on incredibly worn out cassette tape, which dad had already had to glue together once. It's so easy to fix objects, by gluing them back together for example. But how do you fix a relationship? What, he's 11 and he's going through a divorce? I mean, it's gotta suck. Mom moved into the living room, and I was left all alone, anxiously stealing glasses at the window. Alia had trouble sleeping ever since we moved into this house. She would toss and turn and curl up into a ball under her blanket. Sometimes she would jump in the middle of the night and turn on the VCR. Cartoons helped her take, helped her take the mind off all the troubles we had with the move and our parents. Christ on okay that get okay that kind of scared me uh, uh, and then Alia said she saw the giant flying monster outside her window she became obsessed with it our parents did everything in their power they tried every little trick and to get rid of those ridiculous fears Alia refused to sleep alone and didn't believe that the owl was just one of her nightmares after tonight, I was unsure of what to make of my sister's words, and to think of it my what to think of it myself. Can nightmares be infectious? Just last night, I couldn't get a wink of sleep, and I ended up thinking of what to expect in my new school. There were a couple of days left before beginning the of a new term. Ooh, this music is not good at all. It's not the mood. My imagination drew long, twisting hallways that led 
to a classroom full of kids. But all the stu students behind their desks were simply dark figures cut, it, uh, cut out using a template. Circular holes gaped the middle of their faces. The pairs of eyes blinked inside those holes. It was as, it was as if some completely different creatures were looking at me from behind the flat black silhouettes. Their cruel glares, filled with icy sneers, made me shiver from head to toe. Will I survive here? Won't they gang up on me and beat me down? Stomp on me with their bloody shoes? The damn school can burn for all I care. I just wish for anything to happen to it. Doesn't really matter what, I didn't want to go there that badly. I didn't want to see people who were just itching to smack me on the head trip me up, think of a new offensive name for me, worse than the previous one. You know what, now I, I, what was the previous one? I felt like the glasses I wore made me an outsider of sorts, or some sort of monster. I mean, the glasses are cool, I don't know which one you wear. I heard a sound and I'm just gonna hope that was outside my window, okay. My, wait. I mean inside, wait, inside the game, not real. okay. My gaze slid across the drawings hanging on the walls. I couldn't consider myself a great artist, but Olya begged me to hang them. Drawing was the only thing that made me happy as of late. The small circle of friends I had also enjoyed my, I had also enjoyed my paintings. And they were promised to call me from time to time. Sometimes I imagine mom picking the phone and saying in a cold voice, You've got the wrong number. Or, Anton is not around. Anton is not around. I imagine my future classmates lying in their beds just like me, listening to the house of invisible, invisible werewolves outside their windows. Maybe my new classmates will like me after all. But who will like a boy with thick glasses? I mean... <clears throat> Who would like a thick person? Dumb joke, sorry. I mean, my dad used to wear glasses when he was little, and now he's married to the most beautiful woman on the planet, my mom. That's nice. The house creaked, pressed by the wind. The condo we used to live in, a ninth floor concrete building, buzzed with the neighbor's drill. Mumbled with a TV set from behind the wall. Cried like a baby from the big family next door. All the music stopped, dude. It's, it's not. It's. Yeah. I'm not. Well, okay. Uh, uh, continue, continue. Our current house, though I can't really call it new, was completely different. Okay, it was silent and easy going during the day. Its shadows lay dormant in the corners on the closest, on the closet, cobwebs and under the stairs. Those creaking is not, those creakings are not good right now. They're not easy going. But they all woke up during the night. Something was watching me from every corner, almost as if the old photos of my deceased family with their ashen eyes were hanging on the walls as in place of my drawings. The floor was squeaking, rusty drains were moaning, the attic was occupied with noisy drafts. One could think the house was performing some sort of demonic melody. And then I realized I was, in fact, hearing music. Okay, that's creepy. Um, it was already played for a good while. The song I'm hearing is good, but you know, not in this situation. Somewhere at the edge of my perception, I could hear a flute. It was mixed with the sound of the wind of the creaking old house, and my thoughts too. I stood up and rushed to the window. I wanted to reassure myself that the music was nothing more than a product of my imagination. It's not like someone is playing it there amidst the cold, snowy night, right? Oh, I felt the surprise.
despite himself. Someone was dancing in the field, not creepy at all. Black silhouettes I could barely make out, with a dark forest as their backdrop. They jumped around, basked in moonlight, bumped into piles of snow, rolled around and crawled on all fours. Oh, okay. Mm. Stories about wolves playing under the moon came to mind, but these were clearly not wolves. They stood upright at times, circled around holding hands and whipping up snow, disappearing into shadows for a brief moment and then coming back. Something bizarre was going on. Yeah, look at that. Shadows dancing in the starless abyss made my imagination go wild, making me anxious at the same time. Suddenly, the music had stopped. The dancing shadows froze in place, and I could swear pierced me with their eyes. One of the silhouettes immediately parted from the bizarre shadow kind of shadow carnival and sprinted across the field with giant leaps christ on height <laughs> okay um mm, no problem <laughs> it glided on squeaky snow without leaving any prints until it was devoured by the pitch black shadow of my house which became even darker and thicker my heart was jumping around like a bird inside a cage dude I shut the curtains with a smooth motion and stepped back toward the bed. They saw me. Freezing turned and fear washed over me. I stood in the middle of the perfectly dark room and listened to some unwanted guests moving scrape around looking for an entrance. The sound moved to the right, then circled around the house. Now my guest should be at the front door. I jumped into my bed and covered myself with a blanket as if it could protect me. The shackles of fear locked my muscles. I remembered the funeral, my grandma lying there, hands crossed on her chest, her facial features sharp like that of a tin doll, ants running up and down the legs of the chairs that held my grandma's casket. I imagined those little creatures climbing up their, her head and pulling up her eyelids with her, their tiny legs. Then, I wrinkly, then her wrinkly eyeballs would once again move inside their socket and she'd be able to see her grandchildren. That's weird, but not, not gonna question what you, you're thinking. I was chanting the spell she had taught me throughout the whole procedure. And now, lying under the blanket and listening to squeaks and howls, I was repeating the same words. On the island of Puyan, underneath the blemish sun, in the sea of the color blue, stands a cabin made of wood. There lay lard and ashen hair, for the spawn of from the devil's lair. To feast and always leave alone, God's faithful servant named Anton. Evil leave this house must, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Bizarre, bizarre sound had disappeared. I cautiously peeked up from under the blanket and saw curtains waving around like a hangman. Then the light doused me with new portion of boiling terror. The sound scratched at my eardrums. In reality, something or someone were scratching at the front door, hurriedly clawing at the wood, demanding me to be let in. The door was shut. Dad had, be Dad be had become very cautious recently, so he installed his sturdy lock. I remember him staring at the forest intently as if he was looking for someone. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. I hugged my knees, placing my chin between them, and drilled the door with my eyes. It was so flimsy. The weak. It was so flimsy and weak before the nights of darkness. And then. Oh shit, oh shit. Nah, dude. Nah, dude. <laughs> nah, dude. This is not gonna go well. The doorknob twitched slightly. 
then it turned itself halfway one. Once. Twice. As the person who tried to enter had no hands. Ooh, this music fell down. The doorknob tilted once more, and then... It started pushing me. Violin. My jaw turned to fear. My wet fingers clutched the blanket. It was as if the night itself was calling out to me, flapping its black wings and squeaking with rusty hinges. I was trembling and snarled by the web of darkness that hung from the corners of the room, waiting for the one who weaved it to come out of the gaping black hole. My abdomen tightened and my chest rose up, ready to exhale a desperate scream. But before I was able to do anything, the darkness asked me, Tony, you asleep? My sister's pale face protruded from the thick shadows. <sighs> okay. Okay. That, that itself was, that was not anti-climax, but it was anti- this could not have gone any better. I'm just <laughs> okay. I'm calm. I almost screamed from relief. Alia, I, I'm not sleeping. Did something happen? Alia frowned and stuck her little lip, a clear sign that she was about to cry. It's there again, staring at me. Shoo her away, all Tony. Please. I'm so scared. The fear was that was torn in me just a minute ago crawled away and hid somewhere to my stomach. I needed to calm all you down. What a good big brother. I most likely would do this to my sister. It was just a dream, silly. Don't be scared. Your dreams don't bite. No one's going to harm you. All you sobbed. She was trying to do her best to believe me. But was I sure myself? I have an idea. Let's go to your room and watch the video, Sleeping Beauty, for example. You like that cartoon, don't you? Why does Sleeping Beauty... Why does Sleeping Beauty have a prince and I have this scary bird? That question took me by surprise. Alright, let's watch Cinderella. My thoughts became tangled, fuzzy. What was that? What studied me with the eyes while dancing feverishly under the moon? The darkness was clinging to the window, and it couldn't be fooled by grandma's old chants. And it couldn't be it couldn't be satisfied with the feast of lard and long ashen hair. Tony, you coming? Yes, yes, just a moment. <laughs> <laughs>